saying before, that we are in a very historical building. Um, we were founded in 1974, so we're celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. And um, uh, our you know, goal is to provide resources for the community from cradle to career. So from little kids, we have a Head Start program, um, you know, nurseries, and then to all the way up into like college and high school and people going out into the career field uh, as adults. And so Kingsbridge is kind of a, a landing pad and a launching pad for the community members. We, it's very much um, based on listening to what the community members need and support and uh, for, for support providing to them. So yeah, you can see here we have our five different programs. We have early childhood services, which has our Head Start program and our family child care network. We also have our youth program, so that's after school, and our college directions program where we help kids prepare for um, you know, SAT prep and writing resumes and things like that. And the teen center as well. And then our adult and family programs, ESOL, our workforce development uh, and changing futures that provides therapy services to the community. And then uh, KHCC Connect, so it's case management, helping families find housing, um, you know, doing paperwork for citizenship and things like that. And then last but not least is our food justice program, and that's what we're here to talk to you about today. Um, this is all about, uh, you know, nutrition and uh, our, you know, community garden is a huge part of that. So that's what we're here to talk to you about. And this is a short video that I'd love to play. Replay. Oh, oh. oh they might do, yeah, I have to share, I guess, the share the sound. Let me see how to do that. Do you know how to do it? Mm -hmm. I can help you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know how to do that. I think stop the share and then when you start to share again, it'll uh, thing. Okay. So, about James And then, uh, oh, 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 share oh, sound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Okay. 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 There you go. Thank you so much. Why you're <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm just going to play this video so it'll, uh, you know, stop. Three mothers, Mary McLaughlin, Patricia Burns, and Janet Athanasity, had a vision to build a community center that could change the lives of Bronx residents. It started in an old police precinct with a Head Start program. Today, Kingsbridge Heights Community Center is one of the leading service agencies in the Bronx, supporting thousands of residents with services that empower them to transform their lives. Kingsbridge is all about community. We serve the whole family across multiple generations. They actually helped me get into high school and helped me get a sponsor so I wouldn't have to pay full tuition. And even into college, they follow you all the way through. When Michelle was 18 months, I brought her into the Head Start program, which is the baby school. They do everything from early education to adult literacy and empowerment programs. They do programs for women who are survivors of domestic abuse. They don't say no to anyone. Kingsbridge Heights Community Center enriches lives in so many ways, including educational and community gardens where families can grow their own vegetables, and special needs programs that give children with autism and Down syndrome a safe space to experiment and explore. The idea that there is a center that people know is a resource that brings people together, that listens and that responds is something that's so valuable. In terms of the programming, we're busting at the seams and there's way more demand for KCC services than what we actually have in supply. So we need expansion space, we need more satellite space, 
We need more classrooms. We need your help to continue our work. Please donate. Come help us celebrate the wonderful young people here at the place to be called KHCC. Thank, Thank you, KHCC. 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 All right, so that's our video. Um, let me see how I can stop sharing the audio. All right. Um, sorry, one second. All right, so Anthony here is going to talk to you a little bit more about our food justice. Sorry, that video was a little glitchy. Um, let me see if we can uh, share this. Is it working now? No. So part of our nutrition, um, part of our food justice, um, we have two components. We have the nutrition literacy. We also have the, the food access part of it. Um, so we, um, I don't know. It's uh yeah, but you can keep talking about our, our nutrition program. I'm gonna so we have the gardens as well as part of it. Um RSS as well take part on it. Um we have um Isa L from the community engagement team uh who helps us with the nutrition literacy and providing workshop. Um, really nutrition literacy, uh, we raise community awareness, take action, we advocate, we educate around food access and equity. Um, we provide hands-on learning for, for residents about horticulture, plant life, pollination, soil science, uh, composting, and sustainable gardening technique. We also have a um, composting station Later on, you're going to see our composting station at the lower garden. Um, so supporting healthy nutrition and cooking, like I said, um, with the help of Isael, mm -hmm. uh, we provide as well um, cooking demonstration um, at the garden, at the upper garden during our pantry hours. Um, so we provide food to participants to alleviate food insecurity in you know many of our community. Uh, we have members of the community who are food insecure. Um, for example, we also um, someone from Intech, that's the school below, reach out to us, um, also seeking help to help alleviate some of the students who are uh, being affected by food insecurity in our community. So we know that there are a lot of families who are being affected at all different levels. Yeah. Um, and our next slide is actually gonna talk more about our um, the, the people that make up the community and why it's so important. So Susie's gonna talk about it. Yes. Some kids, yeah. So Kingfish Heights Community Center serves a low to moderate um, income for people living in the Bronx and the upper Manhattan. Uh, the majority of the people are Latino. So 73% of the people that we help are of that. 12% uh, Black, 12% mixed, and 3% White. Uh, many of our participants face adversity because of their generational barriers. This makes it hard for their economic and personal success. Um, and this also makes it hard for them to access capital, nutritious foods, healthcare, and quality education. Majority of our community members are immigrants. All of them, of all ages, 64% mainly speak other languages. So there's a big barrier between people that speak Spanish or English. Um, and 30% that we know of are undocumented. 
we assume that that percentage though is a little higher because of the fear. Um, but yeah, that's the community that we serve and uh, want to and make their lives easier. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, and we do that in a bunch of ways. So one of the ways is with our food pantry. Um, we serve 200 to 300 families a week. Uh, recently in, in 2023, we saw a 43% increase in demand for the food pantry. So clearly our work there is very important. Um, we serve about over a thousand households each, each month and distribute 92,000 meals and 80, yeah, 80, 58,000 pounds of produce in 2023. So, um, so our food pantry is providing, you know, food obviously for people, but then uh, what is also really exciting is that within our community garden, we also have the opportunity for people to grow their own food. So trying to, um, you know, you don't just give a man a fish, you teach a man to fish in a way. <laughs> so yeah, um, this, is when our food pantry distribution is. Anthony can talk more about it because he runs it every day. So, yeah. Yeah, so our food pantry is, is it's open Tuesdays and, and Thursdays of every week from 11 to 2.30. Uh, before it was open from 11 to 1 p.m. And then we just uh, extended at hours so we can serve uh, more people. And um, so it's first come, first serve. Uh, we tend to see 145, 150 plus um, people come in, uh, clients, you know, cost clients, pantry members, but um, under that individual, they could be um, another two or three, or maybe up to like six other individuals in that household. So we take in one person um, and then that person will sort of represent their family, and then they will um, give us the number, and then we'll serve them based on their household size. Um, so we also use this app. Yes, yeah, yeah. so we use Plenty Food. That's how we register people coming in. That's how we keep our data. That's how um, the data that we use to report to the city. Uh, you know, for just for us to get support to better serve the community. Um, so feel free to also come in and volunteer with yeah. us. Uh, we have an easy system where people come in, they make the line, we'll register them, we'll bring them down, and uh, we pre-pack in the milk crate sort of thing. So it's it's easy, it's not hard labor um, on that end. So feel free to come in as well and volunteer with us. Yeah, exactly. And Plentiful is really important, like Anthony said, to keep track of our data and our metrics, especially for, you know, to get grants and funding. Um, we have to be very specific about the demographics, but also about like really how much numerically are we doing. So it's great resource for that. Um, this is Anthony, our fearless leader <laughs> out here <laughs> distributing food. Um, you can see we come in with these like huge crates and boxes. Um, so it's a lot of work to unpack it all, to document it all, but it's um clearly, you know, really important. So yeah, the other piece to um to our sort of food justice programming is education. So like I said, like kids who can come into the community garden, it's really a space where we're trying to nurture kids to figure out so they know, you know. When you buy something in the store, it's you you feel a little dissociated from the food itself. You don't understand like how how did an eggplant really grow? I just like pick it up in the store and I get it. But you know what's important is that like teaching the kids like it comes from a seed and then you you nurture it and you flower it. And, and so having this more personal connection connection and relationship to food in a healthy and tangible way, uh, and where there's like greenery in the city. And the other thing that I recently read a book with the kids. Um, I was trying to find books about city gardening and community gardening and, you know, being in sort of New York City, the, the concrete jungle, if you will, like there's there's not a lot of green space. So what we're really grateful to have this space and to provide it with the kids who are here, which is awesome. Um, and now we're going to go in a little depth about like exactly what our garden looks like and where everything is. So this is yes. So just touching on on what Julia would mentioning teaching uh, the youth, teaching them from, you know, start 
to finish in terms of um they go to school they also go to the community garden to learn how food grow that is not only coming from a supermarket um that's one of the question that's always coming up where does the food come from uh teaching them depending on the age um how does the food get to our community you know we use transportation goes into the market and then you go and you bring it home your um parents will cook it um so spaces like um our gardens are a great um space where we can teach um right now you're viewing the upper garden our overall garden is divided into upper and lower garden the um upper one it's open to the community um meaning members of the community residents of the area can come in and sign up for a plot and they will grow uh, whichever you know plant they want to grow. If they want to grow food or they want to grow flowers or they want to grow any herb, it's open to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have the lower garden, which Susan. Yeah. Can you go back on the oh garden? yeah sure sorry in the upper garden so just to explain more it's a free um where you can go and uh get your own plot and like you said uh plant anything you'd like I have a plot I have uh tomatoes uh basil mint rosemary oregano um and I've seen other people have strawberries corn uh, kale and many more uh, vegetables that's really nice that because I live in Harlem. I, I could probably never, you know, have that many vegetables and herbs. So I am very grateful I go and I uh, dry my herbs so I have them for the rest of the year. And yeah, I might like give some to my friends. So that's super nice. Um, and then also in the upper garden, we have that's where we have our food pantry area um, where we do all the distribution. And then we also have a barbecue space where like during the summer for our summer uh, program, we have our uh, barbecue there and have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, we have Neighborhood Fest. Uh, we recently had it this past summer where we also, yeah, we're all hanging out in the upper garden, used the barbecue picnic spot. Um, and yeah, so it's it's a really great space. Oh, there's also a greenhouse nearby in the upper garden. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then in the lower garden, that's where... It's more of the community, not just a specific person's um, garden. So here's where we have our uh, second Saturdays where we tell our well, the whole community to come out and uh, help us with the kind of the garden for, it's kind of like for everyone. So our goal is to grow our vegetables and give it back when we're doing the food pantry. Um, this is where like the most nutritious food comes from, where it's the closest uh, to the place where you're going to distribute it since other places sometimes freeze their foods and and then ship them out to us but um, in the lower garden we have like I said our community garden where it's for everyone we have our honeybees down there mm -hmm. we do our composting which is very important and then we have an amphitheater so just like a lot of things back there but it's more for the community um, we have a playground also um and then we have another picnic area and then in that the lower garden there's vegetables like tomatoes kale lettuce carrots beets basil mint peppers <laughs> blue blueberries blackberries raspberries eggplants and more yeah so we're very uh proud of all of our vegetables and you know when we're working we usually go down there and get some blackberries for ourselves so, exactly. It's really nice to just take a break to go out in the garden and, and pick some berries and <laughs> be one with nature. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, like I said, composting is there also. And we take that very uh, seriously because, um, you know, it's just such an important part of how we make our vegetables very nutritious. And it's just good to, you know, instead of throwing away your scraps, to bring it somewhere where it could be actually used. And then... 
Yeah, and so our compost system, just to go a little more in depth about it, also has these three different spaces. You have the wet compost, the dry compost, and then in the end, you sort of mix it together. And there's there's like a chemistry to it almost to get like the perfect amount of, of compost because you're not just going to put in like rotten fruit in the ground. It has to sort of be mixed together so it has all the nutrients and, that, and then those nutrients can go back into the soil and then into the plant. So yeah. Uh, then we have our amphitheater, which we have a bunch of performances in. Um, like I said, we had our neighborhood fest recently. So we had kids dancing in there, um, doing, this was, uh, for like the Dominican Republic, uh, like traditional dance, which was really great. And then down here was also our bee presentation. Um, we'll talk more about the bees, but they're really such a fun and unique part of Kingsbridge. And this guy right, right over here, um, his name's Flynn. He also goes by the Boogie Down Beekeeper, and he is really, really awesome and comes and teaches kids about the bees, about the importance of them, about honey. And yeah, so another way that we impact the community. So yeah, do you want to talk about Second Saturdays at all? Mm -hmm. So Second Saturday um or a day where we come out and then we work in our whole entire garden we go around we clean up any garbage that's just you know in, in the garden um we do weeding to keep our path clean as well and weeding in the beds to um maintain whatever we want to keep in the bed we also attend um, the compost station, um, the uh, the honey harvesting day was done on a second Saturday as well. <clears throat> we sort of combined the two days, but the uh, second Saturday is basically a volunteer day, which is open to any community. Yes. Say that again. You said it was in the box. Yes. Yeah, we're in Kingsbridge, so we're literally right across yeah. the corner. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Four. Yeah. Before I, and, yeah, I have a disability, and uh, my sister, my mother took to me to Oakland, and I would manage to make two jobs. And I, I, um, I hang out with people that have disabilities. So, but I soon when we're having, and I work with them at times. You know what I'm saying? Oh, good. Yes, that's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So at, at the moment, nice. we're also working to improve the 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 garden. Mm -hmm. sort of the path and the accessibility and, like yeah, like you were saying area. yeah exactly um, yeah because our like you said with people with disabilities or in a wheelchair yeah. or anything like that yeah that's what um, they come in with what they come into westchester with point mm -hmm. where my walk is at uh -huh. and i what i do is i go to point i go to the school mm -hmm. the school 30 in the office mm -hmm. you have to take a number of buses but i get there i don't i don't have to take so many buses because i found them mm -hmm. in. <laughs> And I, you know, I've been learning how to, how to get around at times. So yeah, but they do have a program. So yeah. they talk about what they do with kids, yeah. which has community center, which is right over right. here near right. the right. 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 So yeah. yeah, and I had gone there. You no, know, I, I, and like I said, I was growing up there. Yeah, and I used to hang out with the girl. My mother. Yes. Well, Betty, why don't you let them finish and yeah. then we, we will talk take about questions that at the end. Yes, of course. Exactly. Yeah, 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 but it's great. Um, the other thing, like I said, about second Saturday is a day for people to come and volunteer. And then we also have these corporate volunteer days, which they also then help clean up the garden. Yeah. We recently had KPMG and Deloitte and Aflac this summer, which was really great. Um, and they help out in the food pantry, organizing the inventory. Um, we're also, like you said, about accessibility, trying to make the garden a safer place for everyone, getting the weeds out of the way, scraping the mulch down and everything. So the garden definitely takes a lot of maintenance and we're really grateful to have all of these volunteers who come and help out. And it's a lot of manual labor, but they're they're really great. And, um, you know, a lot of these young working professionals also work mainly in Manhattan and so have never really traveled to the Bronx that much before. So it is a nice introduction for the Bronx for them to, to see what we're doing here and also even for them to just like get a little gardening in and get their hands dirty which is fun yeah and so then this is like our honey like i said um sean wow. flynn he's he's amazing um we have two behind him are our two um hives that's the word <laughs> and this is our honey right here um we have it for sale if you're curious and buying some you go ahead 
Um, and we have harvest about eight gallons of honey. So um, it's definitely a lot. We did one harvest this past spring and we're gonna do another one in the fall. Uh, in the fall, we also have our harvest festival, which is similar to our neighborhood festival, but it has, you know, more like Halloween theme to it, which is, uh, and everyone comes out and plays in the garden and, you know, has the honey and everything. So yeah, these are more, more shots of our, of our amazing honey, which is awesome. And yeah, this is Ray Barbary. She is our CEO. She's also a fabulous person. Uh, she just got honored actually at uh, city and state. Yeah. Um, it was like social work award. Right. So she's, she's worked, you know, for over 20 years in social work and, and her leading at the helm of Kingsbridge has been really, really great. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's our honey. We also have, um, a hot peppers, uh, we grow peppers in our garden and we distribute them to this company, small ax peppers, and they turn it into hot sauce, which is another fun part of, you know, staying connected in the community, supporting community businesses and, um, getting, you know, having our produce reach more and more people, which is great. Um, and so, yeah, now we're just going to talk a little bit about our future projects. Like you said, accessibility. This is one of the things we're trying to renovate the garden and pantry. Like you said, it's the, this garden, you know, it's, uh, it take, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money to maintain a garden. So we're constantly looking for grants and things like that. Um, so, but recently we just got a grant from the Kathy Bank Foundation and that's going to have 10 food justice interns this summer. So like you said, we were showing a lot of pictures of little kids, but there's also, um, you know, teenagers who are going to come and help out in the garden. Um, this, they'll talk about climate change actions, um, conservation efforts, farm to table, uh, horticultural practices. So, you know, taking, you know, the, the education goes from very basic, how does planting work to all the way up to like, how are we gonna make our world a more food equitable and environmentally safe place? Um, there's also another grant, which I'm hoping to get that will renovate our amphitheater and will be more accessible for outdoor performances. So like you saw the kids dancing, it would be, it would be great to do more musical performances there. I think that's one thing um, that we can really expand upon at KHCC is to do more like theater and music and things like that. Uh, and we have this beautiful space right there, so why not use it? Uh, and then yes, in the pantry, we're gonna have more of a shopping model in the future. So, um, you know, right now it's distributing food to people, but we also want people to have their own agency. So they will come out and maybe like pick things off the shelves and, and have it be, um, you know, a more interactive experience, I guess. So that is what we have going on here. Uh, our space is available to rent. If you ever want to have a party, go ahead and rent it. <laughs> um, and yeah, stay in touch with us. Uh, we really love being here. Also, we we're here to answer any questions. We would love to see you at our volunteer days. Um, you know, second Saturday is always a fun place to be. The Harvest Festival coming up, that's in October. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you just want to stop in and say hi and like go right ahead. So yeah, thank you all so, so much for being here. And yeah. <laughs> hi there. I have a question. So we're on Kingsbridge Terrace, which um, police precinct was this? So the address is 3101 Kingsbridge Terrace. Terrace, right. So which police precinct was this, you know, building? If it's the 50th. Yeah, it the was the 50th. Okay. I thought they were on Perot and junior high school 143 used to be near there too. Okay. Yeah, we're uh -huh. right. So uh like D with Clinton, we have kids come from there and JFK, so they'll help out. Right. So yeah. this was the 50th precinct at which moved near 238th and Broadway, correct? I believe so. Yeah. I mean it was we're celebrating our 50th year. It, you know became renovated in 1974. So uh, it hasn't been a police precinct, precinct since then. Um, right. But, but it, was the 50, it was the 50th. It was the 50th. So one, if you go down Perot, it's right there. At right. Okay, no, I know exactly where it is. I just was trying to, I was looking for the address, but you just put that in. Okay, great. Yeah, and it's actually, like I was saying before, there's also like very interesting parts of the building that, you know, are reminiscent of the police precinct. Mm -hmm. So like I said, the, mm -hmm. 
place that's now converted into our gym is where they had the police horses and the stable there. Um, there, you know, every room is sort of like being, you know, adapted to fit our needs. So it's really great. Didn't they usually, a few years ago, they actually did a movie and they re put your, your main room and mm -hmm. made it into a corporate police precinct together. Oh, the movie. crazy. Yeah, I, tried, I heard the movie was terrible. So I, <laughs> I was kind of thrilled to walk into the city and a police uh -huh. precinct yeah. just for that short time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a very historical building. Obviously, there's a lot of maintenance that needs to happen with it all the time, but it is also a very special place to be. So, yeah. How, how many beehives do you have now? Two? Two, two oh, I thought you had more for some reason. Okay. Two big ones, though. Two they're big ones. They're, yeah. Okay. yeah, they're pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And our bees are very nice. They haven't <laughs> stung me. Uh, okay. But, but it's funny because I went, I was running um, one day and I got stung by a bee and I was like, See the my bees would never sting me. Yeah. <laughs> like only the bees walking around, the, those will sting you, but not the Cambridge Heights bees. Yeah, exactly. because they know oh, they yeah. have a mission. Exactly. 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 They know yeah. you. exactly. Don't you also sell your honey? Uh, yes, I think you do it. Uh, uh, what you call it? Um, what's the rest? Uh, the the uh... harvest bus. Or no, you also in don't you at um we do oh my god or huh? it's either online on Johnson Avenue. Don't you didn't you share or no, no, no you did not okay. Or maybe we have oh some of your greens and things, I think you also sell some of your stuff locally, right? We might have or in the past. Did, so I don't yeah. know if we're doing that right now, okay. but uh yeah, maybe in the past we did. We brought okay. um a handful of honeys if if anyone would like them. They're ten dollars each, okay. but it is totally up to you. Right. And yeah, any other questions? Very good. Sounds very good. This sounds great. Oh, great, great. Yeah, we're really but proud of it. It's a lot of work. And... It up and, you know, speak out. So, and if anybody wants to see the garden, what is it? Yes. October second, I think it is. That uh, no, is September it? is our next second Saturday. On no, no, no. Oh, I'm saying have I a have a tour. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, we're yes. gonna bring people from here yeah. to see the garden. Um, you can schedule it. You can talk to Yvonne. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be seeing on the same day, um, there's another garden on Broadway, and they're going to come and speak in September. Um, but we're going to do, because it's a very small garden that they have there, so we're going to stop there and then go to KHCC mm -hmm. and take a tour around their whole garden and even bring some lunch or something. We can have box mm -hmm. lunches brought with you and uh, mm -hmm. to have lunch over there so you can really see this garden in person. It's, yes. it's definitely worth seeing. I haven't been there in a while, but it looks interesting. Well, then yeah. you can come and uh, join yeah. the tour. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah. When is it? It is, now I have to remember the date. October, I have to look it up. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was Oh, you will let us know. Yes, of yes. course. Yeah, yeah no, uh, we it. have, we're going to have it on the calendar. Right. It is, I believe, mm -hmm. October 2nd. It's on a Wednesday. No, we don't okay. have it yet. It's either October 2nd or the, or the following week. Mm -hmm. you, go. you take us there, I think? Mm -hmm. um, you can sign up in the office yeah. for the gardens. We have we have three garden tours, and KHCC is one of them. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. sign up in the office mm -hmm. and uh, register to go and see. We're going to do yeah. KHCC and Outer Sea Shadow OSS, which is, we'll see them another time. Shavir, which I'm going to be doing, we're going to be doing our, and I'm, I'm, I've been involved with that garden for 13 years on the, the 11th, and then we'll see that garden at the end of the month. And then uh, Riverdale Neighborhood House. So we, yeah, it's like the, the, the whole community garden That's thing for the children. And so I think it'd be definitely, and it's nice to see the different gardens because they're so different. Mm -hmm. they, they each have their own unique purpose and uh, personalities. And, and we're uh, very grateful for you for showcasing all the different yeah, gardens. It's yeah. really well, great. You, know, you guys have done such an amazing That's job. Right. Like I said, I saw you from a garden that was probably the size of this room yeah. to, to a learning garden mm -hmm. and, you know, the community garden mm -hmm. and it's just, you know, really made such an impact on the, on the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, That's you great. know, definitely. It's great. Yeah. yeah, and it's something also, you know, being here at RSS, we have, you know, an area where we grow and we, um, you know, thrive out there a lot of the times. And it's good to know that not only we learned about yours, which I know because my niece lives mm -hmm. but that so many people are now getting involved in something that's helping grow for the community. Yeah, that's the most fantastic piece.
Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's just really wonderful for people to have a space, especially in the summer, to just like yeah. be outside and yeah. um yeah, it's, it's well, I remember, especially a lot of the kids, I remember when I was gardening with them and just telling them to put their hands in the dirt. Right. And that, <laughs> to you. me, it's, healthy for you. it's very it's healthy. Healthy. But, but yeah. I'm more afraid to do it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, I'm the first one to get my hands dirty. Yeah. And I think it's so important yeah. for the kids or they're they're eating vegetables. It's just amazing. And, right. and you probably see a lot of the older kids now eating vegetables and things right. yeah. because when I was doing it it was very new now uh -huh. the, the kids right. that were there are probably the older ones now yeah but it was like I don't eat vegetables right you know right and now it's like full of carrot out of the ground I'm like you can eat it yes. <laughs> yes. 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 this conception about dirt I think it's actually dirty yeah yeah and yeah. so we introduce and let them know no dirt is really clean and it's fundamental it's good for you yeah exactly, it's good for me. exactly. Yeah. especially you know dirt in a garden like this that, that doesn't use you know pesticides or harmful chemicals like that is also something that i think is uh, yeah. Me too. I I'm from Westchester actually, and I I don't know if you know Muscoot Farms. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi. It's a great I'm garden. Do a show. Hi. Okay. Cool. Hey, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, small yeah. world. Um. <laughs> so yeah, I worked on a farm over the summer. Uh, back in high school, and it was like an amazing experience. So it's really yes. great, you know, to. To not only have that ability in Westchester, but here as well. Isn't that one of the places where the kids go from the elementary school with apple picking? Uh, there's no know. apple picking, but there's like cows and stuff, and you can like milk the cows. Yeah, maybe we'll take a cow and then we'll turn it into like a whole farm. Do you still have the apple and you get an apple and pear spill or no? I'm not sure. I don't know. You do or, have. I, I, I planted the tree. So, the oh, pear? Yes, yes we do on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. You should come by and get some. Oh, I should. Because yeah. I got the apple pit tree that, that goes straight up just to yes. make room. So you should have. I actually noticed it. And I was like, what? Yeah, we're like, yeah, we're like, what is that? Yeah. Like, They're pears. Yeah, you know. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. That's so nice. That's great. Well, thank you all for having us. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. All right, everybody, nobody else online has anything, or are you good? I, All right, I forgot. Thank you. We got a sale. Bye-bye. <laughs> right. Thanks. I remember you. Yeah.